Don't wanna, mom. So, do you pay any attention to what we're supposed to do? Yeah, not really. Like normal. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What's that do system that we always say from? Stuff from Haunted House. Oh. It's just a way to say goodbye. Oh. I like train. 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 I Told me about it when you took me to the boat <laughs> we have used across the river. Wow. What the front door? You do that too? Yeah, like this whole spaz reload thing. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. As dawn breaks, I see a brick house high up on a hill. Lindsay, the man of the woods, told me about it when you took me to the boat we have used across the river. He said the house belongs to a man who has helped many black folks to freedom. Lindsay brings the boat to the far bank of the river. He tells me to knock at the house and say I am a friend of a friend. I do as he says, and an old white man <laughs> cracks the door and looks me over, sending a chill down my spine. But then he extends his hand and says, My name is John. Nice to meet you, Johnny. He invites me in and sits me down at a table, where his wife gives me the finest meal I can remember. John's children gather around me like I'm a curiosity. Haven't you ever had rhubarb pie? A little girl asks me. I tell her slaves don't eat so good. We were allowed less than half a bushel of cornmeal per week for every four of us. And almost no meat and vegetables, save for some fat back. The word fat back makes her screw her face up in disgust. After dinner, John tells me about Ohio. It is a free state, he says. But that doesn't mean I'm safe. I am what he calls a fugitive, and there are laws against me being here. Even folks who don't approve of slavery might turn me in, because they can be punished for helping me. It's not even safe for me to sleep in the main part of the house. He takes me instead to a cellar in his barn, where I rest until evening. That night, John gives me a rough map of places I can stay and tells me I should travel through Cleveland. From there, he says, I can cross Lake Erie into Canada. His wife packs me food for my journey, and I set out again, wondering how I will make it across the whole state of Ohio, and if there will ever be a time when I don't have to hide or fear the sound of dogs barking. The famous station master, John Rankin, put a candle in his window to signal that it was safe to cross the Ohio River to his home. Slaves crossing the river followed this beacon of light to Rankin's home in Ripley, Ohio. Station masters like Rankin took great risks by helping runaway slaves. You don't say, <laughs> It seems to me astonishing that any government much more that of the United States, should sanction such a source of monstrous crime as slavery evidently is. I would rather beg my bread from door to door, long as I live, than enslave even the meanest of my fellow creatures. My soul ab abhors crime. Oh, <laughs> that one hurt. Yeah. 
Station masters usually hid slaves to keep them safe from slave catchers. Sometimes, slaves were hidden in attics, basements, or barns. Some houses had secret rooms concealed behind bookcases or stairwells where slaves were hidden. Wow, that's pretty cool. Mm hmm Yeah. Like Hogwarts. Well, there's 1,800 paperwork against slavery to express best books and newspapers and shit. We're on the abolition meal. Okay. The abolition tips. Uh, that the headphone thing? Nope. No, 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 no. Abolition tips. Off the Abolition tips. This one. Did sake. Slaves could not have made it on the Underground Railroad without the help of the mm. slave mm. along the way. Yeah. Some mm. helped slaves escape by providing oh. shelter. Others <laughs> donated money or transportation to the cause. A courageous few ventured into the South to guide enslaved African Americans to freedom. Most workers on the Underground Railroad were free blacks or escaped slaves. But fugitives also received help from some white northerners. Some white. Some all of these all people some. had one thing in common. <laughs> They were abolitionists, people who worked to end slavery. In the 1880s, <laughs> the abolition movement grew steadily. Yeah. Abolitionists organized meetings and gave speeches against slavery. They wrote and distributed anti-slavery books, pamphlets, and newspapers. They formed abolitionist societies, signed petitions, and even boycotted goods made with slave labor. Just as not all Northerners were abolitionists, not all abolitionists worked on the Underground Railroad. After right. all, it was against the law to help runaway slaves. Right. Even some of the most famous and powerful abolitionists, like Abraham Lincoln, did not support the Underground Railroad. Right. Not many people were willing to help runaway slaves because it was dangerous work. Those caught helping runaway slaves were often severely punished. A sea captain named Jonathan Walker was jailed and branded with SS for slave stealing, for carrying fugitive slaves Speed in his ship. The work of the Underground Railroad became even more risky when the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 was passed. Anyone caught helping a fugitive was subject to a $1,000 fine or six months in prison. It also made it easier for slave catchers to pursue runaway slaves oh. in the north. The brave few that helped slaves along the Underground Railroad <coughs> usually worked in secret. This secrecy is one reason there are so few records of escaping slaves. The most complete account of the Underground <laughs> Railroad <laughs> was recorded by William Still, the son of fugitive slaves from Maryland. Still worked for an anti-slavery society in nah. Philadelphia and helped most nah. fugitives who traveled through the city. Nah. He nah. interviewed nah. the slaves he met and recorded their stories. Nah. <laughs> Years later, he wow. used these stories to write the most important book yeah. about the Underground Railroad. Good job. William Still worked closely with another <laughs> abolitionist, a white station master named Thomas Garrett. Garrett helped <laughs> nearly 3,000 fugitive slaves <laughs> Traveling through Wilmington, Delaware. In 1848, Garrett was tried for aiding runaway hey, slaves Garrett. and had to pay huge fines. He was left with almost He's using nothing. my mouth. But his work on the Underground Railroad continued. Like many other abolitionists, Garrett was a Quaker who believed that all people were equal and that slavery was wrong. However, not all Quakers supported the Underground Railroad. Some Quakers disapproved of helping runaway slaves. Why are you using my computer? A few were even slaveholders themselves. You're using my computer. Some abolitionists you are. gained support for the Underground Railroad yeah, kind of scary. through their writing. <laughs> Shut up, Colin. Douglas was a slave on a southern plantation. Was RAT DOES THE END SAY?